Hello, hello, how's it going? My name is Aaron and welcome to the elephant in the room. This video will be about the bad effects that trade has in different domains. In the last chapter we learned about the different forms of trade and maybe it was super interesting for you, maybe you've never thought about these forms of trade and I guess you are also trading on a daily basis. Maybe you go to school, maybe you go to university, maybe you do an apprenticeship or maybe you have a job. And you know I am right now going to university but I know I'm just playing the game, I'm very well aware of this because the game itself creates all those problems. So we should really not forget that, we should not forget that we are all just human beings on this planet Earth, just playing this game in one way or another. Because now the Trump superhero is gonna show us the bad influences and the bad effects in different domains. The first domain is space exploration. So basically these two guys are just talking about how great Elon Musk is. Um, they think he's our savior and such a great guy, he's changing the world right in front of our eyes. But then the Trump superhero is like, this is a huge exaggeration, Elon Musk may be a great guy, maybe, but he is the living proof that trade fucks up everything. And he wants us to think of trade like a force that fucks things up. Think about gravity. And you know if a thing like the sun has a huge mass, then it has a very strong gravitational pull. The closer you are, the stronger the gravitational pull. The farther away, the less the gravitational pull is. And he wants us to think now of the trade bubble. And he's saying the closer you are to the trade bubble, the stronger its influence and the stronger it will fuck things up. And the further away you are from the trade bubble, the less strong the influence and the better and more honest um, your service or the thing that you're providing will be. The first example he shows us is NASA versus SpaceX. NASA is like give me money and I'll do the mission and SpaceX is I'll invest my money then I'll take it back. Of course because NASA gets its money in the before the mission and NASA and SpaceX has to find a way of making money. And he's saying SpaceX or whatever other company needs to think about marketing schemes. The Trump superhero says, if they go into space, maybe they will sell their scientific discoveries to scientists instead of making them freely available for anyone, like NASA does. Maybe they will focus more on space tourism, like sending rich people into space, than doing science and exploration. Maybe they will seek for sensationalism over science. And if you look at it, that's the reality because SpaceX plans to send two rich creatures around the moon very soon just to make a buck for the company. They also plan to put satellites into orbit to provide internet for the people, again as a business plan. And you know that's that Starlink um, which is currently going on. And they plan to send I don't know how many thousand satellites into um, space just for business. And another thing was the silly ad, the Tesla car in space, which was a huge ad, probably the biggest ad in the world. Um, and NASA said they should not do it because it might be dangerous, but Tesla did it, um, or SpaceX did it, because Elon Musk said it's a silly thing. So that was the probably biggest ad that has ever been made. There it is, a Tesla car and the Earth behind it. The future of space ads. And the Trump superhero says, what people seem to miss is the fact that rich people can do such stunts. That's the issue, not the car itself or mask, but what these rich creatures could do next. And he explains that uh, with other examples, right now he's just um, referring back to Elon Musk because he's such a rich guy and he only cares about his companies and he is also criticized for many things like for taking advantage of state taxes to grow his businesses and even more things. 
and he's saying as you can see musk and his companies are also under the influence of trade musk needs to run a business and even he who seems to want to make the world a better place is going to become a charlatan here and there and somewhere and the um, thing he really wants to the point he wants to make is that blue origin virgin galactic these companies have or they want to explore space with business in, in mind and that's going to fuck things up mars one is a private um, organization who wants to send people to mars and they want to make a big brother show on mars that's just insane and ridiculous and the Trump superhero is saying, do you think Mars One would care about human exploration or making some profits? Science or mindless entertainment? None of these privately funded organizations and projects that I am aware of want to explore space for the sake of exploration and on behalf of all humans. Because the truth is, they can't. It's not affordable. He shows us now the amazing Hubble telescope because it was paid for in advance through taxes by the US tribe and was not intended to be a currency making machine. Imagine if a company would plan such a telescope, um, they would have to sell the images that the telescope is taking and that would be horrible for so many people because they don't have access to those. And now it's, um, these photographs are freely available for many people. Another mission that was paid for in advance was Voyager. NASA sent two spacecrafts to fly by several planets in our solar system and analyze them. The project's cost was $865 million, took 5 years to build and some 30 to 40 years to run. If this was made by a company, it would have been impossible. What company would make a project that lasts tens of years and how would they get the money back? no one would invest in such a mission. So you see, it is really important that such missions are not under the influence of trade because they will either not be happen in the first place or they will be corrupted in many ways. And the Trump superhero explains SpaceX, Mars One, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic are super close to the trade bubble, whereas NASA and ESA are a little bit farther away um, because of course you know NASA was landing on the moon and they had to pull the American flag there. So in the words of the Trump superhero, NASA and ESA also have to kiss the asses from their tribes a little bit here and there. But yeah, the Trump superhero wants to prove here the degree of influence, the force. He explains if people go into space to explore it under massive influence of trade, like private companies do, then very likely the space exploration will become space exploitation. Elon Musk will colonize Mars because he is obsessed with that planet and will power it with Tesla batteries. The new Tesla cars will be made on Mars and will cost a premium fee to be sold on Earth. But fuck it, the Tesla Mars Roadster is worth every penny. After he dies, the planet will be called Musk, the Musk planet. Bezos, Amazon's boss and the richest man alive today will buy the International Space Station ISS in 2024 when the project is going to cease and he will name it Amazon Space Station, ASS. They will sell space-grown lettuces via Amazon.universe and send them via Amazon Prime to Earth or Musk planet, same day delivery. Amazon will be the first to own an asteroid and mine it and it will partner with Apple to make the first mobile phones with asteroid materials again at a premium price. The iPhone Asteroid Plus bringing back the keyboard. The next scenario is Google. Google will eventually own the moon and tax everyone who needs to settle there for a brief period of time in their long voyages to other planets. They are going to filter all of the space travel. And rich fucks will get to travel to ASS and eat at a premium price a meal on top of planet Earth whilst Instagramming themselves with the iPhone Asteroid Plus and planning their holiday trip to the Musk planet. That's the world that the Trump superhero sees 
we continue down this path. So the point he wants to make is, the stronger the force of trade, the more dangerous and harmful and awful and wasteful things will become. Both SpaceX and NASA are trade bounded, but SpaceX is more prone to do shitty things because the force of trade is greater for them. This is not about state versus private, but about the influence of trade itself. So let's see now another example, another domain, which is knowledge. The girl is saying, I think Wikipedia should stop begging for donations and should become a proper business with investors and actually pay its editors. Their business model is broken. But then the Trump superhero says, actually their business model is better. Keeping profits out of Wikipedia is an excellent decision else Wikipedia will become a clickbait tabloid. And he proves that with the comparison between Wikipedia and Everypedia. Wikipedia is like give me money and I provide knowledge without any trade involved. And Everypedia is like I'll invest my own money then take it from you by collecting data, showing advertising and so forth. Wikipedia is probably the best trade-free service that is out there because they are not asking for anything in return. They don't want your attention because they have no ads. They don't want your data because they have no trackers. Yes, they do depend on money, but it's not that you are restricted to access if you don't donate them any money. They have to ask for donations because we live in such a fucked up trade world. But I think that's the best way of keeping your service honest and trade-free. Um, so yes, they depend on these donations, but they rely also on many volunteers who edit and um, write those articles. Everypedia is basically the Wikipedia that is super close to the trade bubble. It's a private company and they have a business model, which is basically to add advertisements to the website. On top of that, they are also using blockchain and are working to create their own currency that will be used to reward people who create and edit articles. But what happens is, the site frequently focuses on trending topics. The site has been criticized for initially presenting false information in wiki pages on breaking news topics. The site allows for a significantly larger range of articles than in the English Wikipedia because its inclusion criteria for notability are lower. For instance, a very large number of pages describe pornographic performers. And Everypedia can change its business tactics in a heartbeat, providing paid access or who knows what limitations that can only be unlocked with currency, maybe their own or other trades. So two examples of encyclopedias, one is close to the trade bubble and it has worse content and overall worse outcome and the other one stays far away and is doing pretty well both in terms of content and access. As you can see here Wikipedia is pretty far away of the trade bubble and Everypedia is super close. And the last example for today is open source. Basically the guy is saying open source is the best. I love it. Linux, Ubuntu, Android, it has spread like wildfire and that's so. And the Trump superhero says traveling in the game of trade. If you put the open source idea close to the trade bubble, you will ruin it. Just like you ruin Wikipedia. So basically the Trump superhero explains that Linux and open source, the idea is great. But you know the Linux Foundation has this board of members where companies and organizations can buy access to, to it. For example, if you pay $500,000 a year, you become a platinum member. And what Microsoft now did was they became a platinum member. And Microsoft is the antidote, the anti-matter of Linux and the open source idea in general. So you see the connection because now that Microsoft is a Platinum member they can have a lot of influence on the Linux Foundation. And recently they also bought um, GitHub which is the mecca of the open source software where pretty much everyone posts and hosts their open source code. 
and now Microsoft will control that as well. There are also other organizations, as you can see here, that even Google, AT&T, Samsung, IBM and Intel have such memberships and of course they can influence now um, and corrupt that open source idea. The Trump superhero explains it's like if Wikipedia had large investors like New York Times, CNN or Washington Post and they were on an advisory board. So that's troubling. That can really create problems and um, corrupt this open source idea which is usually which is great. Another example he is saying is that people who develop that open source software they also have to find a way of making money. And Ubuntu or Red Hat, the most well-known Linux derivatives, make money out of selling services. I am Ubuntu, I make operating systems and also software for servers. You have a server and a product that needs help with our software? Then pay us to do it for you with open source software. We are the experts on this after all, so you need our services. And so that's what they do. They sell services and make open source software for various companies. They are forced in a way to take the profit motive out of their open source software itself and focus it on services instead. But it's not as black and white and they also get polluted by the trade bubble. Ubuntu at some point added Amazon to their operating system search so that you could search on Amazon directly from Ubuntu and Ubuntu would get a share of that from Amazon. This was a very invasive move influenced by their position close to the trade bubble. Ubuntu needs currency to stay in the game with their products and if they can't make enough from their server-side services, they do such stunts. They made that option as default so many users didn't even notice that their searches could now be shared with Amazon. It took them several years and a lot of criticism to make this option opt-in, so you have to select it to be active. So you see, it's like things get corrupted in one way or another. Another example is the Android monster, which is now full of Google applications that you cannot even uninstall. I also have an Android phone and, and I cannot delete Google Drive, YouTube and Google Maps. So the Trump superhero explains it's a mix of proprietary and open source code designed to sell Google stuff, collect data, make profits or serve advertising. So basically they created a monster out of an open source software and that's because Google was too close to the trade bubble. So you see everything gets corrupted in one way or another and that's also in the case of WordPress. Also this website trumpcenter.com is based on uh, WordPress. But you know, there are many plugins who are free, but then they have a premium version of it where you have to pay for. The Trump Superhero explains it is a way of using a bait on WordPress.com to make people buy premium plugins that should, in theory, be free. Same goes for WordPress themes. And that's how small and big businesses or private individuals rape the WordPress open source platform for profit. Because you already know, they were too close to the trade bubble. You can very well make an app or game as open source but sell in-game stuff like customizations, add-ons, functionalities, whatever. You can read more here on the topic of business out of open source. So when open source gets close to the trade bubble it means trouble. That's also the case for hackers which are basically selling the discoveries they make whenever they spotted a security risk, a security leak or bug, um, they now sell it and it got transformed in an ugly business. So the guy is saying I could report this security bug that I found to Microsoft but I can also sell it to others for lots of money, what should I do? And you see um, hackers and open source who are far away from the trade bubble are no trouble but the ones who are close to the trade bubble are trouble. And that was it for this video. We are gonna explore and discover more scenarios. The next one will be about science research. I look forward to that video already. Um, see you then in the next video. You know you can access all our stuff trade free on trumpsite.com. Take care and much love.